vendors submit uh, proposals. Um, one vendor, unfortunately, we had to um, deem non-responsive because their non-price proposal didn't have any of the forms in it. And it wasn't until last night that Dr. Doherty and I, we opened their price proposal just to see where they were, and that's where all their forms were. And um, it, it's unfortunate. It wouldn't have changed our de decision to deem them non-responsive. It was clearly delineated in the bid response that, that their, um, all their paperwork, all their, their non-price proposal needed to be in a separate package from their price proposal. So, um, so that was unfortunate. Um, we were left with two very good vendors, um, Triumph and Vanguard. They're two leaders in the industry, and they both submitted very thoughtful, thorough proposals to us for consideration. Um, the committee evaluated both. Uh, you evaluate the non-price proposal first um, against the criteria that we um, outlined in our RFP, which I believe is on page two of the memo. You can see that we, we checked with references. Um, we evaluated on whether they were a local vendor or not, um, the floor plan, the quality of work. So there were a number of criteria. Um, at the end of our evaluation process, we really felt like Triumph was the highly advantageous vendor. Vanguard is an advantageous vendor. Um, there were just a few little things that made Triumph seem a little bit better. You know, they are local, they're in Littleton. Triumph is a, na uh, excuse me, Vanguard's a national company. They have an office in Danvers, but their, their real headquarters is in Pennsylvania. So there, there are small subtleties like that that helped tick Triumph over the top in terms of being a highly advantageous vendor. But Vanguard is an advantageous vendor, so I want to make that very clear. We next moved to evaluating um, the price proposals, and that's where um, there was a, a definite difference between the two. Triumph came in at 1.225 million, whereas Vanguard came in at 1,017,000. We are allowed, under the Mass General Law, Chapter 129, we are allowed to now take into totality the proposals. And this is where we can make a determination, is the premium worth it to get to send more to, to stay with the high, more highly advantageous vendor, or do you want to go with the advantageous vendor because in totality the proposal is, is just as good? And that's where the committee um, had some thoughtful discussion about it. Both proposals were for identical space. They're both, the classroom sizes are 13, uh, are 1,056 square feet with, um, inclusive of the bathroom facility. So both, both floor plans were very similar. They were both for new modulars. You know, bidder came to us with like new modulars. So when you put them next to each other, they were very, very similar in terms of what we were purchasing. I think um, Triumph uh, had more costs on their site work when they valued the bid proposal that we received back from the price proposal. We asked them to to spell out what is the cost of the units and what is the cost of the site work. And Triumph budgeted more for the site work than Vanguard did. So, um, you know, we looked at some of those things. We really came to the conclusion that, that, that to spend an additional $200,000 with Triumph really <coughs> didn't merit it. The difference between the two isn't that significant. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, I, I, want, I don't want to talk so long that I don't allow for questions. Um, I do want to tell you some of the good things that we heard about Vanguard. We spoke with David DePisa, who is in Lindenhurst, New Jersey. That was one of the projects that they listed. From concept to occupancy, 93 days, 8,900 square feet of classrooms. That was very compelling to us. Mm -hmm. So um, they met the schedule. They bent over backwards to accommodate. They had weekly, daily meetings. Um, their architect acted as a project manager for them. And I think that's important because one of the feedback that we heard about Vanguard, why they got a, a, an acceptable and not a high, or an advantageous and not a highly advantageous, we spoke with Boston Public Schools who had a project with Vanguard. And it was a similar time frame to ours, a uh, similar schedule, mm -hmm. and they met the budget, but they didn't meet the delivery date. And so there were some mitigating factors. There were site work, unforeseen conditions of the site, they had permitting issues, they had um, delays in submittals. And so the, the person from Boston who spoke with Bob Harrington was very honest. He said, I would hire them again, but I would want more oversight. 
And so that's one of the things when we put together uh, kind of our remaining budget, which is on this sheet, Vanguard at, at a million seventeen, knowing that we still have to purchase FFE, we still have some electrical work that we have to do. Um, we still have to tie in, the, tie in the fire alarm systems at each school. It leaves money in the budget for us to hire an OPM to help us approve submittals, keep the project moving forward. And given that it's at three different sites and we're going to have multiple capital projects this, this summer between mm -hmm. the retaining wall and the roof at Eaton and now three modular classrooms, we think that that would be money well spent um, to help get, keep this project on task and on time. Um, I, I want to open it up for a question. I, actually, I do have one more thing to kind of say before I, I, I feel any questions you have. We did have an opportunity to have a conference call with both BIM vendors, both bidders yesterday, to ask them clarifying questions about their proposals. And we, we put to both of them, this is a very aggressive schedule. What, what is your plan for meeting the schedule? Is this schedule doable? And Vanguard's approach to the schedule um, resonated with us. It was measured. They, they certainly have a plan of attack for it. Um, they're going to have, they're going to begin the site prep work on May 28th, which I realize school is still being in session. Um, but they're going to have one crew to do the trenching, so it's basically a three day process at all different school, at each school. And then from there on in, it'll be dedicated crews at each school. So it won't be like they're going to finish Killam first, and then they're going to move to Eaton, and then they're going to go to Barrows. They're going to be working simultaneously at all three sites to get the project completed. Um, uh, they did say to us, in all in you know in all disclosure, there's not a great time, there's not a lot of time built into the schedule for lost time due to weather. So, but seeing as how we had all the snow this winter, I'm, I'm predicting that there's no, no rain from now on. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, um, you can work in the rain. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'd love to take questions. I, I, I think I've given you a brief overview. I, I know I included their project schedule, some of the milestones from their project schedule to help you understand you know, this, the chronology of events. Um, I just, I just want to yeah. make a comment. So, so uh, as you know, I wasn't at the meeting uh, yesterday. I, I was at the first round uh, a few weeks back, but I, I did talk to Martha yesterday afternoon. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to thank the committee, uh, Steve and, and uh, Joe and Kelly and Martha. Yeah, I think they did it. Uh, great job, and it, it truly is a two-part evaluation process. Uh, I'll call the uh, qualitative evaluation is first, and you don't have any any idea of what the numbers are. Yeah. Clearly, those are envelopes that are in a different room, and you make that evaluation first, which is good, and then you then the numbers come in. So, uh, you know, as Martha said. Uh, you know, Triumph came in, a, you know, a little better uh, from a, that qualitative standpoint, but but uh, Vanguard had, uh, you know, was a little bit below that, but had uh, had both the parts. So mm -hmm. I think the committee made the correct decision. Uh, you know, and you know, I you know editorialized a little bit, and I said this to Martha: I don't put a lot of salt in a evaluation from Boston. I just don't, uh, you know, uh, so, and I think that, uh, you know, given the opportunity, Vanguard has their side of the story on that one as well. So I think that, you know, the way Reading does business and the way our staff operates, uh, we'll stay on top of them and, and uh, you know, we'll manage it, I, you know, I'll, I'll say it, I think we'll manage it better than Boston. He, they did say that, that people were on vacation. It was very yeah. difficult to get things approved, and then no time off. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, as I said, I thank you, and I fully support the uh, decision and the, the real compressed time frame that you're able to pull it off. Thank you. On the whole proposal. Mm -hmm. when did you I did. I have a couple of questions. Um, just a clarification, because mm -hmm. I think I was getting confused between what I was hearing about which company. Mm -hmm. So the one that came in early was that 
Triumph or Vanguard? Um, both have successfully completed jobs on time. Um, so Triumph we deemed more highly advantageous because they didn't have any negative feedback. They, they had a higher DCAMP score there. But to put it in perspective, their DCAMP score is 96. Vanguard's is 92. Mm -hmm. Anything in the 90s is yeah, a good thing. You know, so it's, it's probably it's, just mention what we can just what are we on? Yeah, yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, now I'm not going to know the acronym for DCAM. It's oh, um, capital, capital assessment yeah, management. It's the rating system that's yeah. used to, uh, Every contractor. to assess contractors yeah. on public projects. So, I mean, to put it in perspective, so I, I don't, I, I want to make it clear to the committee Vanguard is a very advantageous vendor. We graded people very very difficult. I think other people might have graded them both highly advantageous. Whereas we looked at it and said, okay, 96, 92, you get the highly advantageous, mm -hmm. you're going to get the advantageous. So, um, my second question, do you mind if I just go <laughs> Did that answer your question? Yes, it okay. did. Thank you. Um, so, do the quotes, I didn't see here, and I might have missed it, they include the siding, the storage. On the floor plan, I didn't see any place for closets, uh, storage space. Guys, uh, they are, we're going to determine where the janitorial closet goes. On site. On, uh, in the design process. I'm actually asking about teacher closets. There's so much stuff that the teachers store. Um, is there a space for, you know, coats for the kids and cubbies for, that, I, I guess that's all, the cubbies for the kids, that's all FF&E. So that would be, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's for Just, just so you know, most yeah. of our yeah. classrooms do not have closets, closets yeah. in the schools. One of the things that we liked about Vanguard's design, which I don't know that it comes across in the, the footprint that I shared with you all, is, and I, I was saying it to, to, Chuck, uh, to Mr. Robinson last night, the bathrooms are almost like Jack and Jill bathrooms. You can access it from both classrooms, so it's almost like both classrooms have two nice. bathrooms because the bathrooms are on the mating wall. Mm. So that was something that we, we liked about their design. Thank you. The last question I have is um, about the safety of the site. If they're going to start on May 28th and they're having <coughs> trenches, um, and they're going to have workers on site, are the workers going to be quarried, fingerprinted? Are the trenches going to be uh, covered when they're not there? You, you will work? follow all the same. We've done construction before, um, and so people, we will be setting that up as part of the meetings to make sure that everything is safe. Yeah, and actually, um, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Huggins spoke to that yesterday when we were talking about it, because we all saw that date on the calendar. We said, ooh, okay, they're going to be on site starting in May. Um, and, and Mr. Huggins also felt, he was like, well, if they have to dig and plate, you know, we'll, we'll do what we need to do. Yeah. I mean, the reality is, if we want these ready for the start of school, no matter who we brought in, it's going to have to start before school ends. I just needed to hear the safety issue. And um, I'm, so the OPM probably will also assist with that process. Can you just yes. clarify, so you were just adding, saying that the OPM, we've got the three sites, and we would leverage anything that's going on with the wall with that OPM. Is that what I heard you say? Or no, no. It, okay. it was more just, um, and thank you for the question. It was more, um, Ms. Cologne is going to have the roof at Eaton, which is and, uh, oh. a partial roof uh, work over at Parker at the retaining oh. wall, and these three projects all running simultaneously, all trying to be uh, condensed into the, the summer. Mm -hmm. And so to have that all... Uh, oh, so to have the OPM... It's good to have an OPM dedicated to this, this project. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. I mean, I'd like to thank you, too. This memo and that presentation was answered just about every question I had. So mm -hmm. thank you very, very much. I have a quick question on the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, have you talked through, and maybe you don't know this yet, have you talked through how that would work? Is it maybe a boys and a girl? Or is it going to be... How do you, if you're in classroom A, how do you know that someone from classroom B has entered? I'm sure that's all worked out. Would you um, explain I, the bathroom situation? Um, you know, I, that would have to be worked out during the yeah, design phase. I don't believe that they're going to be a boys and a girls room because it's, it's one bathroom per, per, um, per classroom. I, I will say that... Um, we had a lot of discussion yesterday about uh, a staff bathroom. That, that so there are um, there are permitting requirements and permitting issues. So we that will all come out in the design phase. But um, Vanguard basically said in their proposal that 
if there is a cost to add another bathroom because of a staff a staff bathroom requirement, if they can't um, get a waiver on that permit, then they'll absorb the cost of that. So it was it was it was very uh, it, was, it was a good opportunity to talk with them yesterday. So that's great because these bathrooms are going to be built for um, I think the phrase was kindergarten height. Yeah, <laughs> so right. Thank you. Very much. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just have a comment. Yeah, I think you did a great job putting it all together and explaining it to us. I do think the uh, OPM dedicated to that project is paramount. And um, I know, um, I'm sure you're familiar with this. I've been through major renovations myself, and I've seen the value of having someone that's very knowledgeable in that role and someone who's not so much. So I'm hoping we can hire a quality OPM because. Uh, I've seen that make a huge difference in the budget mm -hmm. outcome. <coughs> We've worked with some strong OPMs in the past couple of years, so yeah. I think yeah. we have a couple that we're, yeah. we're going to look at. Martha, right. right. so what the OPM charge of 40000 what is that? We estimated um, uh, that was a, a quick back of the envelope calculation with Kelly and Joe um, estimating how many hours per week at a, at a cost per per hour, so this was almost um, I want to say it was almost 30 hours a week of OPM oversight mm -hmm. um, for the 20 weeks of the project. I, I we kept tweaking that number a couple of times. But so the OPM would come in and kind of meet with the job site. They run the meetings. Yeah. They run the construction yeah. meetings. They they're there on site so many days a week. Yeah. Go on. They have everything they need. Yes. Such. Sign-offs, sure permits, that everything is in place. Sure they're the they're the ones that keep the project going yeah. with the paperwork and processes, and mm -hmm. and that's key. That's yeah. I guess what didn't happen in Boston. Yeah. I, I just want to one thing. Just uh, one thing I didn't mention in the beginning, and and uh, I, which I want to point out is that I'm very pleased that uh, we were able to through this process come back and, and live within our means mm -hmm. and what town meeting authorized at the million. Absolutely. Too. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. You're welcome. I, I actually, this is probably a good time to piggyback on that comment. Um, I did have a conversation with the town accountant last night because obviously there's an article in the warrant about changing the funding for this project. And while both respondents were very amiable to and very agreeable to delay payment until mid-May, um, to allow the town meeting process to proceed, um, the hiccup is they both would require an effective contract date so that they can start making their insurance arrangements and their bond arrangements and, and, and other things that they need to do on their end. And so we can't delay a contract date until 10 days after the town, yeah. the town meeting ends because we would just, we would never hit the date. So. Um, it was our consensus with, with the town accountant last night, and, and she reached out to DOR to get an opinion. Um, we do believe that we're going to have to table that article from town meeting, and that this will have to stay with its original funding source of free cash. And the town manager is aware of that. I talked to him yesterday, but last night. Okay, so it's, um, but it's within the original. It's approved. Yeah, it's yes. approved. Yes. Right. No, the, okay, so. What, what the issue was is that were we going to change the funding source to debt? Right. Um, the the caveat was if the contractor was would accept payment later, wait till town meeting was over. Unfortunately, DOR is interpreting the signing of a contract as beginning of the process. Agreement. So we can't wait till ten days after town meeting is over for them to start working on this project. They're going to need a signed contract to begin the work. Okay. Okay. The, well. the, the debt. Uh, decision was purely a, a cash flow uh, mm -hmm. by the town manager uh, and you know I'm sure that he'll relook at this again and if there's anything we can do down the road to re uh, consider right yeah we'll do that uh, I mean but there is a cost that there's a cost of the debt right. as yes. well that yeah. comes with it so that will yeah. be on top of the million so it's yeah. small which is why he likes to do that because of our bond rate. What, what most likely will happen is the wall will be financed through debt mm -hmm. when, when we get that final amount. Mm -hmm. Motion? Yes. 
and we move to authorize the superintendent to enter into contract with the Guide Modular Systems to provide modular classrooms. Second. Any other discussion? Just say again, I support it. Nice job. All in favor? Five zero. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we have two more yeah, quick two award bid awards. Um, we have one for um, uh, our fire alarm testing, repair, and maintenance contract. This is a, a, a one-year contract with an option to renew for two su uh, subsequent years. Um, this was put out to bid under, again, under Mass General Law, Chapter 149. Um, the lowest bidder, uh, the lowest responsive bidder was uh, AFA Protective Systems and uh, at an estimated cost of $100,000. Um, that's that cost, that's not how much we're going to spend with them. That's based on the um, parameters that we give them. If we were to use you for 20 hours, you know, the estimated amount of work. Um, so that, that's how they're developing their costs, or developing their proposals. Um, references were checked. One of the references was the Red Sox. Um, so, and a hospital. But uh, their, their uh, references were all, uh, all favorable. So, I don't know if you have any questions about this one. So, so the total project, there's a rate somewhere that they quote an hourly yeah. rate is just so that they have the best hourly rate? Yeah, so they quote their, their labor costs um, uh, so that it, so you're able to compare everything. We say, for example, on this one, it's we're going to need 20 hours uh, regular time, 20 hour weekend time, 20 hours uh, uh, holiday rate, if you will. And so they put their price their, their hourly rates in and then uh, their material markup. Um, and so after all that calculation, at that time they arrive at their, their proposal. You know. um, move to authorize the superintendent to enter into contract with AFA Protective Services to provide fire alarm testing, maintenance, and repair services. Second. Yes. Yeah. So this is, a, this is a fairly significant range here and, and actually the next proposal too. Is that typical? Is that that just seems? You mean the the range from a hundred thousand yeah, to fifty nine thousand? Yeah, sixty. That's huge. Um, well, I mean the the two outliers there are the hundred forty two and the hundred fifty nine. I mean that that's where I, I look at it. The the first the top three there's less than ten thousand dollars difference between the top three. Right. I think um, the other thing is we usually don't see a lot of people bid. And we're seeing more and more, which is a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's going to, you're going to see a greater range when you have more mm -hmm. bids. Thank you. I think the, uh, the ones that are competitive and price wise are the bigger companies, too. They have probably a more ability to manipulate the price. Mm -hmm. All of the favorites. Uh, Last one. <laughs> um, so, uh, award of a contract for roofing repair. Again, this went out to bid under um, Mass General Law 149. Uh, specialized roofing was the lowest uh, respondent, responsive and responsible bidder. Um, they are currently who we use now, um, and so it would be nice to continue on with them for another uh, one year at a minimum, and, and hopefully renewed for two subsequent years. Um, they provide excellent service and, and quality workmanship currently for us uh, and have for the last three years. We did renew uh, for each year that we had them under uh, the last time we did so. Are they involved with the Eden project? Um, we don't know who that, who that, that bid is out right now um, and submissions are due on it, I believe. The next week, the week after, so that contract hasn't been awarded yet. So that will be separate from this. Yeah, this is repair. Yeah, this is this repair is in services. Yeah. Do we know whether they're bidding? Or are we um, I don't know. I, I do know from Gale Associates that 13 people have pulled the bid documents to bid on the Eaton roof, and so so far everything which is a good sign which is a really good sign he, uh, Gail had said to us that we are hitting the market at the absolute right time we're one of the first projects out there so people are hungry for work and um, so we're, we're optimistic we had um, all 13 of them came to the site visit earlier this week at Eaton 
And um, so we're, we're very optimistic that we're going to get aggressive pricing on that. I did. I just, um, again, I'm new to the construction business. Mm -hmm. And when you were saying that it was going out for bid, I was confused because I thought we'd already hired Gail for this, but it's they this, hire the people to do the actual work they do this design work. This is this is separate from the Eaton Roof. The Eaton Roof is a very large capital project which is going out to bid on its own standalone. This is who we're gonna call if there's a, a the hole in the in the roof that kill them or um, or we need um, some other type of minor repair or maintenance to our roofs within the district. So this is more a repair and maintenance contract award so that every time we have a, a job that could go over uh, the 35,000 threshold, we don't have to bid every single job that we do. Mm -hmm. So this is one of our ways of, um, of, of getting the best on contract and then we can use them. Thank you, I understand, okay. and, but I guess I was just asking about the Joshua Eaton okay. I'm separate because of what I just heard. So Gail, within this Joshua Eaton project, Gail then hires a construction? Gail has, has put out for bid the, um, the roof project, we will actually award the contract. Uh, Gail, Gail is managing the process for us. Oh, okay. And but we control who? G Gail did, we hired Gail as the design. And so Gail has done the design for the pitch and the angle and, and all that sort of thing for the roof. And they developed the bid for, that it's out currently uh, on the, I'm sorry? Yeah, the. The RFP. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We need to authorize the superintendent to enter the contract with special ed grouping to provide group meetings and repair services. That's it for me. <laughs> the 28th. It's a Tuesday. 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 The day after town meeting. Yep. So I just, yeah. I just, it came, it, sure. just very quick, um, one run on sentence. Thank you so much. The blue ribbon seems to be going really well. And, Gotta go. Um, <laughs> workshop and um, thank you for allowing me for the presentation of the course. Yes, thank you. Can we adjourn? Uh, yeah, both. I mean, do we have an, I'm sorry. You, you're you for it. Okay. You're so good. You're yeah. for okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming in, I appreciate it.